Hey, oh, you look Hi. great. Thank you so you much. Look great too. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you very much, please, for coming back to The Tonight Show. Uh, uh, it's so nice to, to see you. I want to see you in person. Uh, how's your quarantine experience been overall? You know, when quarantine started, I was like, this is it. I was made for this life. Wow. I didn't have to make up excuses to not go to things. You know, I'm, I'm like, I, and I got to spend all this time with my dogs. And then after about two weeks, I was like, oh, I wasn't made for this life. I, I actually need human connection. And it made me realize I need to call my mom more. I need to check in with my friends more, not just check their Instagram and, and be like, oh, they're on a beach. They seem fine. It's like really call them. Call them and, and talk to I people. Do. I found it to be a great bonding experience. I'm closer to all of my friends now. I'm closer with everyone in my life. And I am so blessed for that. You were finally uh, recently able to get back to work um, you, you just fi finished filming a movie with uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, how did it feel to get back on set? Was it, were you rusty? Was it like, just like riding a bike? I, there was that moment where I was like, do I even know how to act anymore? You know, and, <laughs> yeah. and, but I got there and it was such a perfect film to transition back into working again after not really talking to people for so long um, and not having that kind of connection and being on set. Speaking of Morgan Freeman, you, you, you got to take away a little souvenir of sorts from Morgan. Uh, can you tell us about that? And by the way, I'm already jealous because I know what it is. Yeah, like, so working with Morgan Freeman, he's one of my idols. He's an amazing actor. He's on that list of people you want to work with, right, as an actor. And it was an amazing time, but I did, I couldn't stop myself from asking him to record my voicemail. Uh, so now when people call me, they get to hear Morgan Freeman. And you are the coolest because you sent us the recording. Uh, let's listen to this. You've reached Ruby Rose. Leave a number. Maybe she'll call you back. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe she'll call you back. Maybe she'll call you back. Oh, my. That's, that's it for the rest of your life. That's it. That, it will never change. No. Why should it change? That's unbelievable. That is, I love that you brought it to us. Thank you so much. And good on Morgan Freeman for being a good sport. You know, the last time you were here, you were here to promote the first season of Batwoman. Uh, and we were both excited. Uh, you were Batwoman, the first one, and uh, we were freaking out. But now you're not Batwoman anymore. You, uh, what, what, what happened? Why did you leave uh, after, after one season? Well, I didn't just leave. I didn't up and leave. Uh, we were in such a weird position because we had to shut down before we could finish the season because of COVID. Um, and then we went into to lockdown. And there was a lot of, like I said earlier, with reflection and things like in quarantine and thinking. And we I ended up talking to Warner Brothers and Greg and where the show was going. And we, we really just kind of had a really honest, good chat where we sort of mutually agreed that Kate Kane and her story and, and everything, we had done what we set out to do. We achieved, I'm so proud of what we did. I had so much fun. I mean, you know, I cried on your show because of how excited I was you were about great. this. And, and I had a blast and I do really feel like it was right for the show to, to pass the mantle onto someone else now. There's gonna be many iterations of Batman and I'm really proud of it and I can't wait to watch season two. Oh good, that's good to hear. Uh, uh, well, you, you crushed on it. Um, and it probably was good training for the doorman because man, <laughs> you kick butt in this film. Uh, uh, you shot this film in Romania. Did you go to, uh, did you see Dracula's castle at all? Or? Okay, yes, but here's the thing about Dracula's castle. People told me it was Romania's Disneyland. So I'm like, let's do this. And when I get there, there's all these merch stands and, and I had friends that were like, send me back something from Dracula's Castle, t-shirts, whatever. I buy out everything. Then I put the t-shirt on, it's like Dracula, you know, and I go in and I get a major history lesson that this has got nothing to do with Dracula. Like this is just because it looks like it's the only castle that fits the description from the book. And so they just kind of made it a thing. And I go in and find out this thing, this place was Vlad the Impaler, this horrible ruler who did brutal war crimes and actually liked to impale people and leave them around the city and outside the building. Okay. And I'm in there thinking, is this the right thing to send home to my family? <laughs> no, you can't do that. You can't, no, you can't buy the, you can't wear that t-shirt. No, you, you got it. You can't. This, this would be like, if, if it's Disneyland, it'd be like if Mickey Mouse secretly loved hunting people. And like, I haven't seen Minnie Mouse in a while, have you? Yeah, okay, yeah, I haven't yeah. seen her in like a hot second. That's interesting, you know, that's interesting. Yeah, you don't really want the merch for that. Yeah, uh, you don't think about that at all. Um, 
The, the Doorman, uh, let's talk about your movie. The Doorman, uh, it's an action thriller. It's fun. Uh, tell everyone what, uh, what it's about. Basically, uh, it's about Ali, who is the character that I play. She is an ex-Marine, and she goes through a very traumatic experience sort of at the beginning of the film. And she ends up moving back to New York to restart her life, heal, and trying to get you know herself back on track. And she ends up getting a job as a doorman, which seems like a reasonable, easy enough job to go back into the workplace. Uh, unfortunately, she does end up being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, they end up shutting down the place that she's working in the building to renovate, and it actually doubles as really a, rob a robbery, headed by the one and only Jean Reno. And she's there and left protecting the very few people that stayed during the renovation shutdown. And it, it, she ends up having to go from being a doorman straight back into being, you know, the trained person that she was and, and saving the day or trying to. Uh, I want to show a clip. Here's Ruby Rose in The Doorman. Take a look. Why would a decorated officer hole up here as a doorman? It's made interesting people like you. I had a friend that came back after war, and he was damaged. Are you damaged, Sergeant? Not as damaged as you. <laughs> what about this guy? <laughs> Take the gun. Nice to meet the rifle. Find a way out. You go that way. Ruby Rose, thanks again for coming on the show. Hope to see you again. Stay safe, please. Ruby Rose, everybody.